Grade fours, you've got a test coming up. So we need to go over energy sources, the input and the output energy. First of all, let's refresh our memory. What have we learned about energy so far? The first recap is the transfer of energy. Now, the source is where something comes from, where it originally starts. So the first source of all of our energy is the sun. From the sun, energy is transferred to plants, to animals, and to humans along an energy chain. An energy chain is where energy moves from one organism to another, like in a food chain. So in this picture, we've got the sun, which transfers energy to the plants. The bunny rabbit eats the plants, so the energy gets transferred to the bunny rabbit. The bunny rabbit again gets eaten by the tiger, so its energy is transferred to the tiger, and we eat meat. Perhaps not a tiger, but we eat meat, and so the energy is transferred to us. There are different types of energy. So we've got movement energy, we've got heat energy, we've got light energy, we've got sound energy, and we've got stored energy. This is the energy that isn't quite happening yet, but it has the potential to move. Other sources of energy. We've got other main sources of energy. We've got food, which originally the source is the sun. We've got wood, so if we put wood into a fire, then it will burn. We've got coal, again we can burn this. We've got oil, and we've got natural gas. These are ma five main sources of energy. Energy is stored and transferred. Energy is stored in sources and transferred to where it can be used. Sources of energy, like we mentioned, include food, wood, coal, natural gas, and oil products. Oil products include petrol, diesel, paraffin, jet fuel, and candle wax. Food is a source of energy. Without food, we humans and animals have no energy to move and do work. Wood can be burnt to give off heat and light energy. Those are kinds of energy, heat and light. And coal can be used to power stations. Now we're looking at input and output. We're looking at machines, appliances, and energy. So you have an input, something happens to it, and you get an output. Now if we have a look, we use machines every day, and they help us to do work, and they help us to use our energy more effectively. The purpose of a machine is to multiply the force that you put into it and make it easier to do the work. In other words, you'll end up using less energy opening a can with a tool or machine than opening a can with your bare hands. If I was going to try and open it with my bare hands, it would take me a long time and I would have to use lots of energy. But if I use a tin opener, it goes quick, quick. I barely feel any energy being used up. Now we're looking at the input mechanism and output of a bicycle. A machine is something made up of several parts that change as input into different output to make the work easier for us. So if we have a look here, the input is the energy that starts the system working. So the input is the force applied to the pedals by the rider's feet. So you have to push on the pedals, that's the input. The output is the final energy result in a system. The mechanism are the parts of the machine working together. In other words, it's between the input and the output. It's the in-between stuff. And the mechanism is also known as the process. So if we look at the bicycle, your foot starts all the energy off. The input, as you push down on the pedals. The process is the chain in the gear system converts the energy. And that causes the real rear wheels to turn and make the bike go forward. So your feet start it all off. The chain and the gears turn as a result. That's the process. That's what happens. And then because that happens, the back wheel turns and so the bike goes forward. That's the output. And you must always bear this in mind, input, process, output. In order for any machine to work, it needs energy or an input to be able to work and become useful to us, which is the output, obviously. If we look at a car, what energy does the car need in order to work? What makes it go? Of course, petrol makes it go, so that is the input. What about a trolley? 
How come the trolley moves forward? Well, a person is standing behind the trolley pushing the trolley forward. So that would be the input, the energy, would be a person, movement energy. And a drum, also movement energy, this time a person beating on the drum. How, how come a fan works? What makes the fan work? Electrical energy. We plug the fan in, electricity is taken to the fan and makes it work. Now this is a tricky one. The computer. What energy did the, did the computer use? Well, depends on what we're looking at. We needed electrical energy to switch the computer on, but to be able to type the word lollipop, we needed human energy or movement energy. Somebody had to sit at the keyboard and type in lollipop for it to work. And there we have it. Those are your last five examples. Good luck for your test. Go over this video if you need to and just double check that you know all sort types of things. The sources, the types of energy, the kinds of energy, what input, what process and what output is. Good luck.